Well, uh, eventually, uh, things fall apart. And uh, when I say things fall apart, I mean that there's a distraction that gets in the way of your of your popular duos out there, right? So like this week, one of the, my favorite duos, Jesus and Mero, have uh, broken up because of, of of whatever, right? And Summertime took out your favorites, Michael and Rod. Why? Because now there's kids around all the time. There's... Uh, there's now vacations to be taken. There are clubs to be gone to. But, 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 but finally, 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 we are back for episode 18 of the Nation 80 podcast. It's your host, Rod. I'm here with Mike. We have so much that we want to catch up on uh, and so much little time because I can feel the heat of my wife through the door from the living room waiting for when I will be finished recording. It's what it is. She likes to spend family time. But Mike, how are you doing? What's going on, cousin? What's going on, Rodney? Yes, uh, yeah, summer hit it, and um, yeah, things just kind of fell apart. I did not know that about uh, Jesus and Meryl. Uh, yeah, yeah, so uh, uh, before we got online, there was a, a article that came out, and uh, uh, apparently their uh, manager, Victor, uh, was pretty, um, I guess his behavior on set to their show was what kind of broke them apart. Mm. And so Jesus was like, well, uh, so he, Victor was told no longer to come on set. And Jesus was like, all right, understood. Where Mero trying to claim loyalty to his manager was like, no, I will not do that. So uh, it caused them to break up creatively, which is sad because they have by far brought a lot of laughter and joy through some down times. Uh, so I really oh, right. they wish just signed that big contract, what, a year or two ago? Or what uh, was that? It, well, it was before the pandemic, so it had to be about three yeah, two, years ago. Yeah, at least a couple of years ago. But they were, what What was it, HBO or Showtime? Showtime. Or Showtime. Showtime. Yeah. yeah, and they really got me through the pandemic with all the clowning they did. So um, I will miss them for that. But you know how it goes, unfortunately. Um, even if me and my brother were a dynamic duo on something, I feel like after seeing my brother every day, all day for four years, I think we would break up too, you know? <laughs> uh, now I hope that never happens because I would hate to be estranged from my brother, but you know how that goes. So yeah, uh, that's, that's, that's sad to hear, but, uh, you know, life goes on. Yeah, absolutely. Mike. So let's start off talking about. You know what? Let's just encompass it this way. Let's talk about what has been your favorite thing of the summer so far, right? Because officially summer's not over, but like we were talking off mic, uh, my daughter's again ready to go back to school. Mm -hmm. So that tells me my summer is over. Mm -hmm. And I know yours is it's getting it's close to till end. It's getting because close. I think because what uh, after your son, vacation, it'll be done. Yeah. 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 So you know, he's you guys are almost right back in the classroom yourselves. So yeah. over the time of the summer, what has been your favorite thing of the summer? Oh, I think by far it has to be the Steam Deck. You know, um, mm -hmm. I think if anything, I've, I've, my summer has been consumed by, of course, the family stuff. You know, we had baseball season and band and MMA tournaments and, um, and just a daily, you know, work of and grind of work. Uh, but I think the thing that has caught my eye, because I, I really haven't gone out to see movies. You know, I think the most recent movie I've seen has been Doctor Strange. And I saw that streaming. Uh, I've been dying to see Top Gun, but because it's doing so well in the theaters, they're keeping it in the theaters as long as they can. Uh, so that leaves me with the steam, to, to be honest with you. And it's 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 been, you know, amazing for me. Uh, I am completely in love with this thing. Um my switch has not been touched, at least by me. You know, Jen has been using the switch. Uh, Elias has cannibalized it to take the Joy Cons and use it for his switch when he has friends over, so that he can have extra controllers. Uh, but my switch has kind of gone to the wayside, and I'm I'm slowly. I just you know, Unmetal was the one that was the first game that I've actually no, I take that back. It's the second game 
that I've uh, purchased <laughs> uh, that I've had on Switch, and now I just purchased it on Steam, and I play it on Steam now. So, um, yeah, the Steam Deck has by far been the best thing to happen to me this summer. It'll probably be the best thing to happen to me this year. I dare so, say. So, just to add uh, to kind of piggyback, just going off of your choice, uh, I guess the other cool thing that came out of that too was me and you were able to share our libraries. Uh, for oh Steam. Yeah. yeah so you know there's a lot of games that you had that i didn't and, and vice versa so it gave us the ability to you know download them give them a shot see what well we and then save money them. i think that's yep. a big thing too yeah you know? absolutely absolutely because you know during this inflation uh th- it's pretty important to save a penny here and there well uh, hell not even a penny a dollar because we yeah. don't know where things are going right but yeah. Um, just it's to make a different choice to what you said, because I agree, Steam Deck has really uh, been the thing of the summer as well. Uh, I'm just going to go kind of all encompassing and, and just say uh, the amount of entertainment I got over the summer in in this in the grand scheme of things. Right. So uh, for those who don't know, if you're 80s baby, maybe even a 90s baby. You're aware that when summer comes along, yes, you have your movie blockbusters that used to come out in theaters, but all of your television was pretty much done for the summer mm-hmm. unless they wanted to show something experimental to see if it was going to gain any traction, right? So everything usually used to be on uh, repeat, on reruns uh, for the summer, and then they would wait until like September, October time frame to bring it back to television. But that was when you had... 22 episode seasons and and uh you know you might have maybe the winter break because they didn't want that to affect uh ratings or anything like that well times of course have changed right and so now we got over the summer we got miss marvel we had stranger things we had obi-wan kenobi we had doctor strange we had thor love and thunder uh and those are just the ones that come to mind um, but there's been a lot of phenomenal television that's come on over the summer because, like, we go through TV shows like Water and, uh, for that matter, movies. You know, as soon as something comes out, uh, me and my wife are all over it. And, uh, and, and and the kids, for that matter, too. So, oh, a matter of fact, Lightyear came out. And all those things have been have made made the summer fun, right? Don't get me wrong. We got out. We explored. We saw family uh, unfortunately, me and Michael didn't get to see each other uh, due to scheduling conflicts when I was in town. But actually, uh, why am I saying this the corporate way, right? We <laughs> just unfortunately had no time to link up because we assumed the other person was busy. Right? And the one day that we could have linked up, we did. <laughs> we didn't link up, right? And, and, it, and it happens, but it just sucked because, you know, uh, me coming long distance. But I understand. And I didn't get to see his beautiful daughter. Uh, and the rest of the family, but uh, we'll rectify that eventually in the future. Uh, man, you know how how family is. We 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 ride or die together. So, but uh, those have been those were my things for over the summer because it just seemed like I got my heart my heart is full when I get um, entertaining stuff, well written stuff, uh, just um. The pure excitement of certain things, you know, so um, it's been very cool when it comes to all that stuff. So uh, can't wait or whatever. My- yeah, I think you hit it on the nail, man. I mean, I still think, you know, like I said, my the Steam Deck was amazing. But I mean, just the stuff that we you made a great point, the stuff that we got over the summer, you know, with the TV shows, especially, uh, you know, just with Miss Marvel, uh, we're still in the middle of watching that. We just finished Kenobi, which was amazing. Uh, man, that, that was amazing. Uh, Stranger Things, that was amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, can't wait for the last season for that to come out. Uh, and then, you know, uh, anybody who watches uh, Seth MacFarlane's uh, The or- Orville on the Hulu, uh, so far that season's amazing. Uh, I heard it's been it's been really good, and I, and I and two. Uh, to Seth MacFarlane's credit, uh, I've heard nothing but good things. I've always been apprehensive because I pretty much had Seth MacFarlane overload between Family Guy, American Dad, Cleveland, mm-hmm. and whatever else he did that I didn't give Orville a try. But 
I feel oh, like it's, I they're, 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 he's killing it. The show is obviously killing it. You can tell like they've got a bigger budget now that they're with Hulu. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's just a, just a great show. Uh, Star Trek, um, uh, the new Star Trek show is also really good. Uh, so it's just, there's just been so much, uh, and I'm sure there's other shows that I'm missing that, uh, that we've been watching. Um, uh, but yeah, you, you hit it on a nail. I mean, there's just been so much good stuff. And, and like I said, there are movies that I, I want to see, you know, like Lightyear, the new Minions movie. I want to see Top Gun, um. You know, I still haven't seen Thor, Love and Thunder, you know, so this is so much. Uh, we got so much. And if it weren't for the logistics of life and and kids, you know, we, I've got the extreme of I got the, the 11 year old and then a daughter who's about to turn one in a few weeks. Um, so, it, it, you know, trying to get things scheduled is is a bit difficult, but uh, it's been fun. It's It's been fun. You know, we've gotten a lot of great stuff this summer, TV show wise and, and movie wise and. I think you're absolutely right. It's it's been it's been a lot of fun to see. Yeah, you know, but um, Mike. So let's let's start off there. So I did go see. Um, recently, I went to the theaters. Uh, well, just over the summer, I saw Lightyear in theaters. I saw Doctor Strange at home, and I saw Thor: Love and Thunder in theaters. And I've, I've come to the conclusion that my retirement from the movies is coming. Uh, quicker, <laughs> quicker than later, and the re- I, I don't want to. And so, to be fair, the experience of going to the theaters, as far as sitting in the seat, watching it on the big screen, it's still there, but everything that comes with it, uh, rounding up the kids, um, paying for the ridiculous amount for popcorn and and, and soda or whatever, um, and then, um not knowing that you're not at home, but you're just in another room mm-hmm. uh, have, has really, it's not annoyed me, but it just makes me feel more comfortable about setting up a better entertainment system in my house. Yeah. Just to, just to enjoy it from my couch. Right. And then I can, you know, you know do dinner, have a beer cause I'm not driving or, uh, you know, uh, make my own popcorn. You know, there's so many other ways I can take it. Um, I still love the theater, but I feel that the, you know, compared to back in the day, the need to having to be there the first weekend or even the second weekend or a month has left, right? It's come and gone. Um, I know there's sometimes I want to get out the house, but I'd rather be a bit more active these days than, just go from one room to another room and mm-hmm. then just be paying for it. Right. Right. So, right. Um, well, especially if you're going to be paying, you know, with you, you know, you got two kids, you got your wife and yourself. And I can imagine it's, it's close to a hundred dollars just for a two hour movie. That's, you know? And that's going to the old theater. Right. If we yeah. went to the new one uh, and this is a matinee show even, right. Like right. going yeah. to a late night show just Ooh. ain't happening. Yeah. It's no. too expensive. Right. No. Um, but I told you this in, in a text back in the day, right? And I mentioned that I really wish I seen Doctor Strange in theaters and saw Thor: Love and Thunder at home. Mm-hmm. So uh, I didn't really go into detail when we talked, but the reason I say that is because all of the Easter eggs in Doctor Strange made it worth it to see it in theaters, mm-hmm. right? Uh, Thor: Love and Thunder is good. Um, I it's 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 not like in my top 10, it didn't change anything in that category. It was still a great film. Uh, I, I'm happy with what they did with it. Um, uh, anyone who's done, who, anyone who's seen Thor one and two, when they see three and four, they go like, yeah, this is so much better than the first. Right. Two, right. right? <laughs> um, you know, so for that part, I am satisfied, but I feel like because it didn't bring anything new to the table, um, we're still questioning what's happening in phase five that we're that it didn't do anything for me. Right. Um, it didn't do it. It didn't give me a justification why I needed to go to theaters to see it. That's the easier way to say it. Right. Right. Uh, like, I know you have an affinity for Top Gun, so I will understand if you go see that in theaters, because that's something you want to see uh, with the whole immersive and everything. Right. Uh like, for example, Jordan Peele's Note came out. 
I don't necessarily want to see that in theaters, not because he's a bad director or anything, but I can deal with those type of movies at home. When I Avatar really two, huh? I really want to see that movie. Same here, same here. Uh, when when uh, Avatar two comes out, um, for me personally, because I just know how James Cameron is. He did it with uh, Battle Arena Alita. He did it with the Avatar film. Anything James Cameron touch, he puts some sort of cinematic magic in it that going to the theaters is like the the total experience to see it. You almost right. want to buy the Dolby Atmos theater, 3D, blah, 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 whatever you call it, right? right. Yeah. Uh, but you know that uh, even if the story isn't the greatest, you just know with the technology he has his hands on, he's going to do something to it to mm -hmm. make it great. Right, that your 75 inch or 65 inch television can't capture it, right? And that's the way I feel about that. But uh, what's your thoughts? Yeah, no, I I completely agree. I think I'm, I think the, where I'm at in life right now, uh, I, you know, I like I said, I've got the two extremes where your daughters are more closer in age, mine are way way apart. Okay, uh, so Elias is 11, Ada is almost one. And so if we want to go to the movie theater, we got to do we got to figure out to do something with Ada. And so usually we can either depend on her grandparents or her her aunt and uncle. Um, but like, uh, you know, Jen's brother is in the in, has been in at the Cape for the last couple of months. You know, he just bought a house up there. It's a summer home. And so, OK, so now that avenue is out the window. That sucks. Um, and then like uh, her grandparents love to take her uh but it's just trying to figure out when the best time is because they have lives too you know they've they go you know the grandfather goes you know golfing the mother's always at the the gym working out and doing other stuff or hanging out with friends and so trying to find that time and then you know plus elias has uh got this baseball thing and mma and uh and so uh trying to find a logistic to actually get to the movie theater and i just we and we could always do it, you know. Jen's always like, we can schedule, we can get it done. I'm like, my thing is, I just don't want to schedule stuff, you know. I just, I don't want to deal with it. Um, I just want to go. I just want to go. Wanna, right? Yeah, I'm the uh, same way. So yeah. I am right. Like I, you said earlier, Top Gun is my most anticipated movie right now. Uh, that's the movie I want to see the absolute most of. You know, I was nervous when it first came out, I had very low expectations. Um, I have a buddy that I work with who uh, is a bigger Top Gun fan than I am. Uh, and he had low expectations as well. He's already seen the movie like three or four times in the theater. Um, Cause it's, yeah, he's like, he's like, he's like, Mike, it's just that good. I was yeah, like, I've heard nothing but good be, things. Yeah. I'm like, it can't be that good. Well, it obviously is because it's, it's, just, it's breaking all the records right now. Um, and so uh, I want to see it in the theaters, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to wait for it to come out on streaming. You know, mm -hmm. I really want to see Thor Love of Thunder because I want to see Natalie Portman as Thor, especially mm -hmm. because she got jacked for it, you know, and but I don't, I'll wait for it to come out on streaming. I, I can't wait to I can't wait for you to see it on streaming so we can have a conversation because I think right around that time. Uh, this Thor storyline uh, came out was when I just got back into comic books. Yeah, and, and it uh, was a great storyline. Yeah, Jason Aaron, Jason Aaron, and Isad Ribic did an amazing job. Yeah, with that yeah. whole book, uh, I never finished the books themselves. I got really close to the end, but they knocked it out the park. Yeah, but it's probably my favorite. Man, dare I say my favorite comic book run of all time mm, it's okay. just that good you can't, uh, it's, you can't be faulted for that one i yeah it's just it's just that good so i'm super hyped for it so it would be literally top gun uh thor love and thunder you know and then everything else after that yeah <laughs> you know, like, well yeah I, I would love to have a discussion with you about it just because of how they had to change that format for the movies compared to what the books have to offer yeah, right. I've been I've been pretty good about staying away from the online stuff or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I've heard I you know, but inevitably you always hear people you know um, compare it to the books and 
what they didn't like about it and stuff like that. So yeah. I'm interested to see, you know, um, how the characters were, especially with Christian Bell being gore. Mm. Um, so I, I am interested to see that. Uh, so uh, it's, you know, well, spoiler alert, Christian Bell is Christian Bell. He's a, yeah. he's a, he's a thespian for a reason. Yeah. And, I mean, and so he's, he's, he's still, you know, even though he's doing a Marvel movie compared to a DC movie, he uh, he he always shows up, which I'm always super impressed with. He's 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 one of those guys that dives deep. Yeah, you know, it doesn't matter what movie it is. If he needs to get small, he gets small. If he needs to get big, he gets big. Like mm-hmm. he is just that guy that dives deep into it, regardless. Like you said, whether it's a comic book movie or not, mm-hmm. um, he dives deep into it and. People could say whatever they want to say about his voice as Batman and yeah. this and that or whatever. Show me a better Batman. Like, yeah. literally, you know. Um, yeah. I loved the new Batman film, um, but uh, I don't know if I'm one of those people that's ready to crown um, Robert Pattinson as the, the top Batman, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, I, 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 would give, I would give Pattinson another movie or let's see a trilogy yeah. and let's... Yeah, because that was a great movie. Can... Yeah, uh, but yeah. like like I said, you know, so I yeah, I love Christian Bale. Um I I can't wait to see that movie. Uh, I can't wait to see Top Gun. I just, you know, where I'm at in my life right now, movie mm-hmm. theaters is just not uh an option where I will enjoy it, you know. The in fact cuz and maybe it was because of the Batman. You know, mm-hmm. I I saw the Batman with Elias. It's a 3-hour movie. We saw it in a movie theater together. Um and we saw we sat all the way in the back. It was one of those movie theaters where you could eat, like have dinner at, whatever, you know, order dinner. Um and it was just a bad experience. I and it wasn't like because people next to me were being assholes or anything like that. It was just we were all the way in the back and I, you know, had to wait for food and mm-hmm. uh, you know, somebody brought a baby into the movie theater. <laughs> I was like, who the hell's bringing a baby into the movie theater, right? Um oh, yeah. So uh, it just wasn't a good experience, you know. And mm-hmm. then, and then the experience before that, I think we went to go see. It was probably some Marvel movie. I can't remember what what it was. Uh, but we left Ada with you know her grandparents and. I think it was uh, Spider Man. You, you Spider-Man. know what? You're right. It was Spider Man. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, you know we got a text after it that you know. <laughs> <laughs> things we're at defcom one you know like mm-hmm. <laughs> get back to the house quick you know? yeah so. and that's what i'm saying man that's what makes it that's and that's the challenge right uh you know because we're transplants in hawaii so we just don't give our children to anybody and we don't have family right, right. so you know and, and we love doing things with them but you know the incessant uh that's my popcorn uh i want more this drink or i gotta go pee right and, you know where someone's gonna go with them you know and, and and then to be fair it's not even their fault because like i get it to an right, extent kids, you know yeah it is what um, it is yeah you know but when you're at home you can pause you can say you know what uh like we watched what did we watch at home it was three hours. Maybe it wasn't in game. We watched Justice League and we were like, you know what? That's all for tonight. We'll watch the rest of it tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. we picked up after where we left off. And there's mm-hmm. nothing wrong with that, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't feel betrayed because I saw only a portion of the night. I don't have to rush anymore, right? Yeah. Like we joked before, me and you were binge watching Daredevil, 10 episodes of Daredevil a whole weekend just mm-hmm. to prevent spoilers by the time we went back to work, <laughs> you know? Uh, any show of that nature, that magnitude, was like, it is important for me to knock it out as soon as possible so that I can get it done. And and now that seems like the worst thing I could possibly do, right? Don't get yeah. me wrong. I did it with Stranger Things, but Stranger Things was so, so captivating. So good. So good. So good. So good that... Uh, I I was willing to you know binge watch it like the the only thing the only thing that I hated about Stranger Things is they had the nerve to break it up into two parts right right yeah just give it to me all right and and, and that's just me being a fan of it I understand Netflix side of the business we need to we need to keep these numbers going and captivate and all this other stuff because you know how we used to do. 
I'm going to yeah. get this subscription for a month. I'm going to watch Stranger Things, and then I'm going to cancel. But now <laughs> that they break it up, you know, you get the subscription, and then you're like, oh, the other part comes out in July? Oh, crap. Well, I might as well keep my subscription right, until July. Right. Yeah. You know, and I get it. I get it, you know. Yeah, but, uh, FYI, quick uh, <laughs> dump for my man Eddie who got killed in the show. Oh man. oh, man. Oh, man. My man Eddie was my favorite in the show. That's my boy. Hey, oh. I'll put it like this. We've been listening to that Kate Bush song forever. <laughs> and it's, it's it works so well. Like, everything about that TV show. Oh, uh, matter of fact, let me, we might as well get into it, right? When season four came out, Mm-hmm. I had in I didn't hate on it, but I just said like, well, season three was really good. I was like, I don't think that they can beat season three. Right. Where can you right? go from here? Right. Yeah. Like, where can you go from here? I'm tired of going to the upside down world. Like, this is the, the you know, like I was saying, like they should have stopped the hit. And then because of that massive time span mm-hmm. between ep- uh, seasons, I was like, these kids are dang near thirty. Mm-hmm. You know, let's go ahead and just shut this down. Why are we doing this? Right. And then that first episode came on and that girl levitated to the sky Mm -hmm. and then got folded up like a transformer. And then I was like, okay, I'm in, I am in. Right. And that that freaked Elias out, (laughs) man. Of all the things to freak about, not the Demi Gorgon, not Mm -hmm. the the brutals, whatever Mm -hmm. the, the, the kids that were got folded up that freaked him out. He was like, man, I can't even watch that. I was like, Bro. Man, I can barely watch it. Oh my god! Thank yeah, you. and and that's the thing, right? The to me, like the other ones were like PG thirteen, and they went rated R with this. Right? Oh yeah, yeah, and, and and then so like they do a phenomenal job with an ensemble where they say, okay, we're gonna split these characters up. These characters are gonna do this. Winona Ryder and and David Harbour are gonna do that. Uh, uh, you know, Eleven and her crew is gonna do this, and then they all come together at the end, mm-hmm. and they. They do it just as well as the Russo brothers do the the Avengers, right? Because you know you can't have them all on one screen at all at one time all the time because it just becomes boring and they're just sitting around, right? right. But getting that story to work out in such a way where they split them up, it made total sense. And uh, uh, you know, and to see how life changes, right? I always look at the kids of Stranger Things that I like I look at me, Michael, my brother Brandon, and my cousin Damon, right? By the time we hit high school, we all had our own interests, we had jobs, we had other things going on. So the crew kind of split up. But before right. that, like we spent every summer together, right? All the adventures happened together, right? Um, we might not have played D and D, but we played Sega and Nintendo together. We played yep. Game Boy together. We played Cops and Robbers together. Tag together. Baseball. Mm-hmm. You know all those things we did together. So when the crew splits up, there is heartbreak. Or you know we grew we grow older, right? We girls are down into the picture. Um, someone doesn't want to come to Indiana for the summer anymore. You know they want to stay and and do other things. And that's how I felt as I was watching season four. Like, you know, uh, uh, what was his name? Um, Caleb McLaughlin is his real name. The the brother Lucas. of Lucas. Lucas. Yeah. You know, he was trying to, you know, play basketball and do other things. Yeah, he was trying know? to be. He was trying to be the popular kid. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So you know, Will was trying to stay the same. Um, Eleven was trying to, you know, go through life without her powers. Now, mm-hmm. you know. And all these things played a part. And at first, again, I was like, um, how y'all going to make this all work? And they just, they gave a master class in storytelling. Um, yeah, no, it was great. Yeah, they, mm-hmm. the way that they had all these different storylines, you know, like you said, you had Hopper's storyline from, from Russia and, yep. and being in prison. And, and then, you know, Joyce is trying to figure out a way to rescue him. You know, you had Eleven and uh, and Will, you know, being awkward, you know, social life and, you know, mm-hmm. having to deal with like being being bullied. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Mike is just trying to get back to her. And, mm-hmm. you know, like I said, Lucas is trying to be the popular kid, the jock or whatever. You know, Max is like this, like super tortured, you know, girl who feels bad about like PTSD. Brother. Yeah, feels bad about uh, her brother dying, you know, uh, or being killed. Uh 
you know, so everybody's got all these like these issues. In fact, I, I Dustin was the only one that really seemed like things were fine for him, you yeah. know, um, mm-hmm. other than, you know, trying to, you know, level up and, you know, whatever. But, you know, you, you know, you had Steve who's trying to, you know, rediscover his feelings uh, for Nancy, you know. Um, so it was just they had so many different storylines going and you weren't sure how it was all about to go down. And like you said, they they brought it back. And they they really yeah I was telling somebody about this at work because they're still watching it but like they're like man I'm not sure what's going on I'm like trust me by the time you get to the end they tie it all in together and it works so well and you're just like oh my god and it's just like oh man that was a that was a nice ride and for me you know uh, we went from part one to part two seamlessly because. It just took us that long to get through part one. We did, we weren't able to binge it or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and by the time we finished part one, it was like literally we waited a week and then part two started. Um, and I totally it's, it's only two episodes, but like they're super long. I think the second episode was like two and a half hours or something like that. Yeah, um, it was because it was only and, two episodes in that second yeah, part. And so mm-hmm. like it was it was great. It was, it was great. Like you said, the the writing, the maturity, the the you know what they're what they're doing i loved 11's backstory um i loved how number one or one was the one that is you know the the main protagonist because everybody thought he was just a general of the Mm -hmm. mind slayer you know um Mm -hmm. but no it turns out you know no he's the guy (laughs) he's the man he's the main boss you know that's the boss you gotta defeat uh and so i'm ready for that one man um I'm ready for it. Uh, I, I, allegedly, I guess they're supposed to, the last season is going to be a time jump. Um, mm. It's going to be way into the future, pr- pretty much. So, you know, so because, like you said, of how shooting and scheduling was done, you know, these kids are are grown, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I know Nancy is, is um, almost 30 years old. The, the lady who plays Nancy. Yeah. Is, uh, 11's, 11's 18. Yeah. You know? So she, she started um, at like 14 or yeah or 12 yeah, Millie, or something Millie, like Millie Bobby Brown <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah but uh you know they're all grown I actually you know I had to show Jen a picture of 11 in real life mm-hmm. and she's like who's that I'm like it's 11 she's like oh no I'm like yeah she's grown mm-hmm. she looks nothing like her character no you know? she doesn't so, um like so, I would be pissed if if I if, if I was her I'd be pissed they're like hey we're gonna need you to cut your hair again Right, like, right. Come on, yeah. Like, let let stop it. I'm tired of doing this. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, so no, I'm I'm super excited for the last season. Um, I think allegedly they're supposed to be making a spinoff series. Uh, but I don't I don't know how that's gonna be, and I don't I don't know if I'll watch it. But I am super mm-hmm. excited for the last season. Um, mm-hmm. you know, and you know, Netflix needs something because they're not doing well. They are yeah. they are not doing well. Their their stock is fallen uh and it sounds like they might even be bought out by microsoft at some point in time well Um, no so microsoft is helping them put their ad system in place um they got fortunate that this quarter their stock did rise um but they got a lot to work through um to get some to and and so that's why they stopped it like password sharing and all this other stuff so Mm -hmm. it's going to be interesting to see if they can I'm the, the, uh, you know what's crazy? I remember we sat here and we talked on the episode, and I was like, I don't know what Disney Plus is going to have to keep me um, with them, because I was like, once these initial, I think four Disney Plus shows come out, I mean, uh, uh, I was saying I'll probably have to end up canceling because there's nothing else I wanted to watch, mm-hmm. and that I wasn't really interested in their old catalog, right? Right, and boy how that was probably two three years ago how times have changed right because now disney plus uh it was announced today because san diego comic-con is going on right now Mm -hmm. um san diego they uh marvel has a announcement thing going on i think it's either tomorrow or sunday we're recording this on a friday um uh, july 22nd but it's already been announced that Logan, Deadpool 1, and Deadpool 2 are on Disney Plus. Yes. Right? Yep. Um, and they're they're going, you know, they're going all in on this whole ratings thing. Cause I, we all thought that Hulu 
was going to be the place for a lot of this stuff. But it seems like even Disney Plus is changing with the times and saying, hey, you can find rated R stuff right here, you know. And, uh, you know, you just have to, of course, check your profiles and make sure that your kids aren't watching something they're not supposed to watch. But, you know, we already had a conversation previous, Mike. The the Netflix shows are already on there and, and stuff like that. So uh, what makes it more interesting to me is, like like you said, yeah, Netflix stock is not, not never stop, but Netflix's amount of shows is not going too great. Like wifey and I watched Resident Evil, the TV show mm. that was on Netflix. Mm. And uh, if I knew nothing about Resident Evil, I would probably like it more. But because I do, uh, that show was not great. Oh. And the only reason I like it, the only reason I even care about it is because my boy from The Wire, Fringe, and John Wick is in there. Um, I can't think of his name. It's oh, um, right the bald headed black dude. Um, yep, 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 yep. Oh, so, oh my gosh, his name is on the tip of my tongue. But yes, I know who you talk about. Yeah, yeah. I will. I always will root for that guy. So uh, I watched it because of him. Um, he he himself did a pretty good job on that show. But the show itself, for a majority of it, uh, especially when they talk about the teenagers in that show, mm-hmm. runs like a CW show. Oh, and uh that that bad. yeah that didn't do it for me so um yeah uh, netflix is just i with so many streaming platforms out there you know and I, it feels like there's a streaming platform popping up every month right mm-hmm. um netflix is one of the ones that you know jen and i are like why do we have it okay mm-hmm. uh we all we literally only watch so for me before Stranger Things, uh, the only thing that I'm watching on Netflix is Umbrella Academy. That's mm. the only thing I'm watching. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the only thing that keeps me from canceling uh, Netflix. Uh, and once those two shows are over, then it's like, okay, whatever. Um, and I think it's because they put too much out. There's too many shows on Netflix. And I think that really hurt them. You know, uh, like you mentioned earlier, they had this deal with Microsoft for the ad campaign. Um, but people are the reason people are looking at that as Microsoft acquiring them is because it's a stopgap. Like it's their, you know, their earnings, you know, if you look at the past decade or whatever, it was like 20, 34 percent earnings, you know, year over year. Uh, but now it's like less than eight, seven percent. Uh, yeah. And so they're like, Microsoft is this could be a precursor to Microsoft acquiring Netflix. Plus and the so, crappy thing is, is the fact that everybody wanted Netflix because it had no ads and for them right. to now follow the same boot as everything else. Like it I can't sucks. tell you. Yeah, yeah. I detest ads. Yeah. It kind of sucks. I, I hate, especially with like Hulu mm-hmm. and Hulu's the worst yeah. uh, because if you're watching an adult show and I'm, and I don't mean like a gratuitous show or anything, it's just a, if you watch, you know, like uh, Orville, Mm-hmm. okay uh these are the kind of commercials we get okay it's vagina commercials mm-hmm. or are you having a hard time getting it up commercials i'm like mm-hmm. man what the hell mm-hmm. i don't want to see this crap <laughs> 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 it, 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 it's just terrible commercials you know yeah, like, yeah. Uh, what was the and one plus that- they the, they're, they're, they're they they pop up so regularly yeah. i hate it for that and i hate it for mb uh peacock right yeah because i have a peacock as well and there's nothing worse that like the minute that the intro song plays, all right, here's another 30 another seconds commercial. of commercials. Yeah. And, and you hey, can get rid of that if you yeah, pay, pay extra, more. Yeah, you know? yeah. But like Hulu, you can't even get rid of the ads unless you have like their live service. Yeah. And and that's the problem too, right? Because I don't know how you did, Mike. I had the package with ESPN Plus, mm-hmm. Hulu, and Disney Plus when mm-hmm. they first re- announced it. And uh, I agree with you because I wanted to change my Hulu package so I could watch the NBA and all this other stuff. And they were like, well, uh, because you bought it through Disney, you have to cancel Disney and then recalibrate it. And I'm just like, no. Right. right? Uh, and, and just makes it annoying because I don't. I'm getting to the point that I'm about to get on Demon Time and just start a Plex server because it doesn't right. make any sense. I, I, I'm tired of it on you. Like for, for real. I'm almost to the point where I'm going to get rid of all my streaming services 
and do demon time on that and then only have a subscription for youtube because i detest the amount of ads that come across my face on oh, a daily yeah, basis. it's terrible it's yeah. absolutely terrible remember that black mirror episode back in the day like the very well i know you didn't watch because of that first episode right but that <laughs> second that second episode they were talking about a period in life where you're paying a company to stop showing you ads yeah right in a future where the ads just keep on coming up and like if you wanted to sleep you had to pay so many credits to get the ads to stop right or you just had to grin and bear it as they just sat there loud as humanly possible right next to you and i feel like we're starting to go that way because like uh i'm i still use facebook and twitter they have an ad when you want to watch a video there i listen mm -hmm. to podcasts they have an ad on that um mm -hmm. uh, i'm sure i audible i don't know if they do it with their subscription service like if you got a book for free but i wouldn't be surprised if they went to that model right yeah so well, at least for Audible, at least for now, so because mm -hmm. I do have their subscription service, there there are no commercials. Okay. Um, with, but with that said, like you like you said, it it could happen, you know, yeah. and, and it's kind of the give and take. It's like okay, we don't want commercials, but commercials is how these people get paid, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so let's say you know for us at some point in time where we get to a hundred thousand subscribers, yeah, all right, yes. um. We're, we're going to make money off of ads, right? Um, and so it sucks because, like, you especially YouTube is like the worst. Like, if you don't want ads to YouTube, you got to pay it $15 a month, okay, to get yeah. no ads. Mm -hmm. And I, so I did this, I did the free trial just to see how it was because not only that, it's no ads and then be able to watch YouTube on your phone through their app and then minimize the screen if you want to go into something else. Yeah. Um, other apps do that for free, like Hulu. Okay, mm -hmm. you can watch something, minimize it, and go check your email at the same time. And, and whatever's playing on Hulu will play. With YouTube, you got to pay for that. Why? Because they're greedy. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> so because they know um, that's what you want. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. I did that for a month, and it was cool. It was super cool. Even even like uh, you can your screen can be off, and whatever you're watching on YouTube will still play. Yeah, which was great for channels like. Um, comics explained where i'm mm -hmm. listening to rob talk about whatever comic i don't need to watch it i just mm -hmm. listen to it um and that was cool uh but then it was like okay do i really want to pay 15 dollars a month just to not have commercials that's ridiculous that's mm -hmm. utterly ridiculous so yeah no i'm with you man i it's hard to justify certain streaming services i think for me Right now, Disney is probably my best. No, I won't say it. I, it's second best because Hulu. I, I watch a lot on Hulu. Mm -hmm. uh, I watch a lot on Hulu. Uh, but I did just downgrade from Hulu Live to just regular Hulu. I've okay. had, I have had I stopped Hulu Live after the playoff. The NBA playoff stopped. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, as I told you, I was like, as soon as the playoffs are done, the championship is over. I don't get rid of Hulu Live because we don't watch anything live mm -hmm. um, other than basketball. Uh, and so now we're just on regular Hulu. So I went from like paying $70 a month to $7 a month. Um, and then Wait, Hulu Live is $70 a month. Yeah, it's like $70 a month. Oh, hell yeah. no. Yeah, and that's for like the basic stuff. You could, of course, add on whatever, but yeah, $70 a month. Yeah. Um, and I say that as I have sling. Uh, orange package. I had it for the playoffs, and then uh, F1 racing started, and then I, I love my wrestling, and I'm paying forty dollars a month uh, for all of that. So yeah, yeah, no, I I got rid of Hulu Live. The only reason, really, I got Hulu Live was because uh, originally it was for baseball mm -hmm. to watch the Cubs because they, mm -hmm. they they're not on WGN anymore. Uh, really? No, WGN has been gone. Okay. And so they went over to NBC Sports for a little bit, and then they started something called the Marquee Sports Network. Mm. Okay, and at the time, you could only get Marquee Sports Network through either Xfinity Comcast or through. Actually, I, let me take that back. It wasn't on Xfinity yet. It was either through Hulu or some other BS. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was like, "Cool, I'm gonna get Hulu Live. We'll be able to watch the Cubs games." Um, Got it. 
not like one month into the preseason, uh, Marquee Sports Network uh, struck a deal with Xfinity Comcast and uh, said, okay, bye Hulu, we're on Xfinity Comcast. I was like, man, what? So oh. then you couldn't watch any Cubs games, oh, any unless it was on the ESPN. And most of the time it was blacked out. Um, couldn't watch any Cubs games. Cool, mm-hmm. whatever. So then ba- football season comes up. So then I watch football, you know, on Hulu. Okay, and then basketball started. So I watch. So I watch basketball, and I was like, man, this is bullshit. I, you know what? I will wait. We'll wait till the playoffs end, and then I'll get rid of it. Uh, yeah, seventy dollars went from seventy to like seven bucks, um, just to get ba- just to have basic Hulu. Ridiculous, <laughs> you know. So yeah, that's insane. Uh, yeah, so because we don't watch anything live. Uh, Same here. So, uh, yeah, Disney. I mean, we watch our Marvel shows, we watch our Star Wars shows. Uh, we really enjoy a, a lot of the um, the Nat Geo shows on there. Um, mm-hmm. And then we watch a lot of like, uh, like we try to get Elias into, and, it, and he loves it. Um, like we're like happy that he loves this stuff, but he he does love watching like the old school like seventies, eighties, you know, Disney movies, whether it be like Thirty Thousand Leagues, you know, Under the Sea, or you know, um, uh, The Navigator, or you know, Back to the Future, whatever. You know, yeah. he, he loves all that stuff, and so uh, Disney to us, for us at least, is still a very big thing uh and it and hulu it is it's more for jen and i you know we we're watching or i say i'm watching a show now called um what we do in the shadows uh oh i've heard number of good things about that show it's great it's it's basically um like the office or parks and recreation style type of filming mm-hmm. where you have a film crew follow you uh mm-hmm. but with vampires yeah so and it's it's, it's got my boy funny. Matt Berry in it. I, I'm <laughs> I've been a fan of his since IT Crowd. Look, there's uh, an episode where Wesley Snipes is in there as a vampire, oh, as Blade, oh, literally I, as Blade. I got like watch it. he's because they have like a vampire council and uh they have they have I can't remember what they said his name is uh but it's like Wesley something he he's on like Skype <laughs> and like, they're like why is he even here he's a half blood he kills vampires. <laughs> And I was like, yeah. oh, this is so dope. <laughs> yeah, I, I got to check it out. I've I heard nothing but good things. We've been watching uh, The Bear. Um, it's a show about um, a, a kitchen that's not, a restaurant that's not thriving. And I guess the dynamics of uh, working in a in a restaurant. Um, it's really good. It's on Hulu right now. Uh, we've been watching this other this horror TV show called The Yellow Jackets. Okay. Um, about a, a soccer team that crash landed in oh, a particular part. Yeah, 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 it's really good. Uh, it starts off kind of slow because they're building up, but that's been really good. Uh, and then as much as I try to avoid it, um, uh, I have finally started watching Yellowstone, and damn, it's good. Damn, it's good. It's like watching, it's why. Only thing I can say is like is it brings me a feel of watching Justify back in the day, but it's even better than Justify. Yeah, um, I think we've watched maybe three or four episodes of that. Yeah, and I know that's one you can't really watch in front of kids because there's some nudity, there's some pretty gr- gross. Right. It's um, a mature show. That's a show for adults. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But uh, the way that it's written, and uh, I, I think I'm like four, four episodes in. Um, and the and the power dynamics that come with it, and um, uh, I always kind of thought that my man from the bodyguard—I don't know why I can't remember his name—Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner. I always didn't think of him that much of an actor, but he plays a great role in this show. Um, he he was a perfect fit for it. So um, yeah, those have been my go-to's right now. I still need to finish up Miss Marvel and Obi One. Uh, Oh, and uh, is so good. Oh, yeah, good. yeah, yeah. I don't it know is, what episode you're on right now, but I think I'm on episode four. Um, okay. Uh, you know what? And I, I'm gonna say this right like all the heat that they've been trying to give the lady that plays Reva, Reva to oh. me is one of the best things of that show. Oh, right? just wait, just wait to the end. Okay, because I've read I've read the stuff that been and whatever. I I shake my head because it's like uh 
people just need to get over it. You know, yeah. all the all the racial BS about how ooh, we can't have a, a black female as a main character in a show. Oh my god. Right. You right. Know, get over it. Right. Um, I'm waiting but, for. Uh, I'm waiting if, if somehow, some way, a Hot Toys character come out for her. I, I gotta buy it. I'm going to buy the action figure when wait, it comes around. Get, yeah, get to the end of the show. It's I'm super hyped for her because, okay. man, it's just I have no idea where they're going with the second season. Mm. Uh, but they left it completely wide open. And so there is going to be a second season. There is going to be a second season. Um, it might it might only just be a second season. Okay, um, just to finish out the story because they. They left the story wide open, like, yo, this mm -hmm. is this is not over. Mm -hmm. um, and Reva, like, her journey through the show is freaking amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm I'm just I'm I'm psyched for what they're gonna do with her in the future, um, and the kind of opportunities that is giving her to do other stuff, other projects mm -hmm. uh, with other you know movie you know companies or whatever. Uh, but uh, the show is great. I mean, I love the fact that they, you know, oh man, I, I, I don't want to say anything else because it's just, it just gets really good, but uh, okay. it's really, well, I I'll, I'll make sure to watch it and we can talk about it next yeah. week. Yeah. And, that's definitely uh, one that I'm, uh, cause I, if anything, you know, star Wars, the star Wars shows, you know, um, you know, Dave Filoni is the one that's really been the guy behind the scenes of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, he's basically the Kevin Feige of the Star Wars verse. Um, in fact, they, a lot of people call it the the Filoni verse, um, and he he's been the main guy behind, you know, Mandalorian. Even though you know uh, your boy, um, uh, gosh, I can't think of his name. The director, um, John Favreau. Yeah, Favreau. Even though mm -hmm. Favreau's been directing a lot of like Mandalorian, the guy behind the scenes is really Filoni. Um, and what he brings to the table, what he's been doing. And he's basically been the Kevin Feige of the Star Wars, uh, like this, this Filoni verse. Uh, and what he's done with Mandalorian and Boba Fett, now Ahsoka and Obi-Wan. And then we got um, Andor coming out. Uh, it's just going to be, it's going to be insane. And it's so weird because this is all stuff that is not like, present stuff it's all stuff that's happened in the past in the star wars universe and mm -hmm. um that to me is more interesting than what's happened in the star wars movies the present you know mm -hmm. um and so uh yeah get to yeah get to the end of kenobi because there's so there's so many things that happen and you're just like oh man don't yes yes uh okay. so yeah i'm i'm excited to talk about that one that's yeah so am i so am i uh i i, I like i said um, I, 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 I'm, I, I know I watched a lot when I was at home visiting my mother and then I did watch some more when I came back, but I didn't finish that up. And, um, me and my daughter have been watching Miss Marvel and they've done a really good job with that as well. I haven't, I'm nowhere close to the end. And I think that's only six episodes. I think I watched the very first two. Um, so I'm interested to see where that's going. I'm going to have a bigger discussion about that next week as well. Uh, not just about Miss Marvel, but the Marvel TV shows. Yeah. Because um, I, I personally am starting to see um, a pattern and a problem in the sense okay. of the fact of because of them introducing these heroes on TV compared to movies. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, like I said, we'll get into that a little bit. So to end this off, Mike, because uh, um, it's almost it's a little bit over five here. We have a family walking thing that we do every night nice. um, to stay active. But uh, to, to finish it up for our last couple of minutes, let's talk about something that we have been waiting on for a while and it finally showed up. And I don't know, I don't know if it just kind of came and went because of just how things were going um, and we didn't give it the airtime it deserves or what, but Ninja Turtles, mm. Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge came out for the PC uh, and uh I've started it. I have only got into like the third level, but it was one of them games that I wanted to play with you. And we were trying to work out some time to play it and it never worked out. Uh, but yeah. Why don't you tell me what you think of that game so far? Yeah. I mean, I've heard right now that people are talking game of the year. 
Okay. And it's weird to say it's weird to hear that for a 2D side scrolling beat em up. Mm -hmm. Uh but the game is so refined. Um it's so mm -hmm. just it's an easy pick up and play. It's got like the Mario RPG element in there now where you can explore different points in a map or go back to different points in the map. You can upgrade your character. Um, I have found, I've tried to limit my playtime on it uh, just because I don't want to get too far in it without playing it with you first. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I've got maybe three or four levels into it. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm and the I've, same thing. And I've been replaying it with different characters just to kind of level them up and, you know, find all like the, the little Easter eggs or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's, it's just a, it's a fun, addicting game and it's a perfect game for, I mean, really any platform, but really for the switch or the, the steam deck, like steam deck. I, like I was going to say, like we, we keep on saying this over and over and over again, but now that I have a Steam Deck, my Switch is almost damn near non-existent. There's a couple games that Nintendo did announce that I do want. But if they ever make the mistake of saying, hey, we're now going to platform stuff to PC as well, there is no need for me to have a Nintendo anymore. Um, right. Yeah. And, you know, I think like, yeah, I think I sent you a link with Linus Tech Tips and Oh yeah. yeah, that they were set. They were trying to set up a thing. I never watched the video. I watched the video you sent me, but I didn't watch the video after that. Yeah, so I watched. They... Yeah, so I watched a, the video after of how they did it, mm -hmm. um, and it's really just, you know, it's it's just emulation, you know, mm -hmm. um, and it's not perfect, mm -hmm. uh, but and and to be clear, they did it uh, show like they blurred out the the actual video gameplay. Because mm -hmm. Nintendo will come after them. Absolutely. Um, but uh from what I saw, they it worked pretty damn well. Mm -hmm. And and here's the caveat though. Mm -hmm. The only way to really do that is if you have a first gen Nintendo Switch that hasn't been updated. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So it's not like I can do it with my Switch. Uh it's you gotta have a Switch that's a certain version. So basic it's basically the first gen Switch. Um, that hasn't been updated to whatever version, mm -hmm. and then you can go on there, jailbreak the system, pull your ROMs off of there, uh, and then put them onto your your Steam Deck. And then even then, because the, the emulation is, and, and this is what happens with emulation for anything, mm -hmm. um, but the emulation is it perfect? But it's pretty darn close. Um, and he was playing everything from. The Mario games to Zelda to Metroid Dread, uh, and like you said, it, it barely skipped a beat. You know, mm. certainly playable. Um, and so, give it—I mean, literally, give it a couple of years. The Steam Deck community, like I'm on Reddit all the time, mm -hmm. and seeing what these people are doing, seeing what they're trying out, seeing how they're getting stuff to run on there. You know, my my main goal right now is to get. Uh, uh, my emulation game running on the Steam Deck. Uh, but to get that on there and to eventually get it, and it's going to get to the point where the emulation for the Switch is going to be really good. Yeah. Um, that's bad news. For, that's bad news for Nintendo. Yeah, uh, man. They're, they're going to have to come up with something. You, you know what? No, actually, let me change that, right? Because there's just the loyalty to Nintendo is something that I can't explain, right? So I think that they always will have that, be able to carve out that particular market. Um, but with the Steam Deck being around, now I have access to a lot of uh, Xbox games and PlayStation is now bringing stuff to the PC. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's going to be exciting. Like right now, uh, WWE 2K22 uh, is on sale. So as much as I didn't have any intentions to purchase anything, um, I think I might go ahead and purchase this because i love a good wwe game when it's done right and this one has uh been highly um has, has gotten great reviews on it it has its problems like anything else of course but it's got some great reviews but um the steam deck overall uh other than battery life has knocked it out the park yeah right? absolutely you know, you know? And, and i would dare to even say and i and i don't know if this has happened to you yet mm -hmm. you know um 
there have been maybe two or three times where I've had a game in suspended play mm -hmm. and I've started it up, you know, hours later or days later. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you have 10%. And I'm like, oh shit. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking, I'm fumbling for like the charging cord and then it just turns off. I'm like, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've had that happen with other worlds a couple times. Or so, the game is, is crashed on me. But yeah. So like, not heartbroken. Uh, there's, there's been a couple of times like that, whatever. I I've never been heartbroken about it, but but now I'm like, all right, if it if it's at 50%, I'll plug this mug in. Uh, yeah, I keep mine plugged in all the time. And after you gave me the tips and tricks of what to buy off the off the rip, which I appreciate, um, between the cover, uh, I got a braided cord, but they accidentally sent me two three feet braided cords instead Ooh. of one six foot one. Oh, geez. but the cool thing is, is I have a <laughs> I have a work computer. That uses a USB C charger, and so I just been using that every night. Yeah, and that's the, and that's the great thing. Like with the switch, it was their their big thing. You know, there's so many videos put out like, don't just use any power adapter for your switch mm -hmm. because you run the risk of breaking it. Mm -hmm. um, only use the Nintendo approved power adapter, or it wouldn't charge. Right. I had I had yep. a I used the Nintendo one and it wasn't charging it. It would keep the game on, but then as soon as it unplugged, it would turn off. Yep. So and, like Elias had that same issue. Yeah. Um, and so, but with the Steam Deck, it's like use whatever you want to use. Yep. Okay. Um, the only problem that I can see right now is with certain USB C hubs. Mm -hmm. Um, especially like ones of off brand ones, like like I have an anchor one. I mm -hmm. I stick with like a major brand name one, right? Mm -hmm. Um but otherwise, with power adapters, like you said, like I actually use my Nintendo Switch. I have my Nintendo Switch power adapter at work. I have two Nintendo Switch power adapters, one for the yeah. house and one for work. Um, mm -hmm. And the one for work, uh, I, I'll hook up into my Steam Deck every now and then. Um, mm -hmm. I actually have a I, ha I have an anchor one that I bring with me everywhere. Um, but if I just need to qu quickly plug in real quick, I'd plug into my Nintendo one that's at work. Uh, right. And so... Uh, and I don't, I don't mind it. I don't mind playing corded. And like I said, I just bought like this, um, I'll send you a picture tonight, but I, I just bought this 65 watt, 20,000 milliamp power bank. Mm -hmm. Um, and this thing is literally, I'm holding it right now. It's, it's got some girth to it, <laughs> <laughs> but it's a four hour flight. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got to do what you got to do. And, you know, and you'll see, and, and I, I will say the Steam Deck comes through on a flight. Um, you'll be, I think, it, it'll, just like it did with me, it worked out perfectly. I think more than anything, and this is just a testament to its weight, uh, I get tired holding it in particular positions. Like, I like laying down on the bed and playing it because I don't have so much weight um, using it. Compared to like, if you're kind of like elevated, you got your elbows on like the 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 tray of the the of the chair in front of you, mm -hmm. and then it feels a little bit like after a couple like thirty minutes, you're like, oh man, this thing feels heavy. My wrists are killing me. And then you got to put it down for a little bit uh, while you're playing it. But uh, Michael, we have hit our time limit for today, and. Uh, all we can say is we hope you safe travels out to the cod. Yep. Hope you have a great time with you and your family. Um, this has been another episode of the Nation 80 podcast. And uh, I, I think uh, when Mike comes back, I would love to get into some comet talk again. Oh, as for sure. Because it's been, it's been a long time. It's been too long. It's been too it's long. Been, yeah. And I, I would just love to, to because I, I have a Marvel Unlimited subscription that needs to be justified. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, because of all this other entertainment, it's been hard to read something, but I need to get back to it. But tune in to next week. If Mike's not here, I will still produce something because uh, uh, I need to get us back consistent again. And uh, we will see you next time.